For centuries, the Tower of London has been a place synonymous with torture and execution. But even during the Second World War, it was used as a place to execute. It was within these walls where two of Henry VIII's wives lost their heads, and Lady Jane Grey, the nine-day queen, would be condemned during the reign of Bloody Mary. But during the First World War, a number of German spies would be condemned here, and as mentioned, the final execution that occurred at the Tower took place during World War II, with a German spy named Joseph Jacobs being shot on the firing range. Jacobs holds the title today as being the last person executed at the most infamous prison in history. Join us today as we look at this, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Joseph Jacobs was a German citizen who was born in 1898, and little is known about his early life. But as the First World War broke out, he signed up to fight in the conflict as a German soldier in the infantry. He became a lieutenant in the 4th Foot Guards, and was well regarded in the army, and he would during the Second World War be drafted in to become part of Hitler's Wehrmacht, as an Nazi dictator tried to conquer much of Europe. Further promotions for Jacobs continued, but before the conflict he had actually been imprisoned in Switzerland, as he was charged with selling counterfeit gold, and because of this prior conviction, he was demoted to the position of a Feldwebel for bringing shame on the German military. He continued to fight on, but was transferred to the Meteorological Service Department of the German Army, and then he was enlisted as part of the Abwehr. This was the German military intelligence service for the Wehrmacht, and they operated during World War II to conduct sabotage operations. They would be involved also in counterintelligence and espionage, deploying spies in different regions. Joseph Jacobs specifically worked in intelligence, and he was trained as a spy. In September 1940, he trained in Hamburg in conducting a work in the field, and he would head back to Berlin at the weekends, but during one of these trips, he was told he was about to be sent on a mission to England. At some point, he even contemplated fleeing to America to live with an aunt, but he would then be transferred back to Hamburg. He was said to have been a good trained spy, and he got further training in 1941, but on the 31st of January 1941, he was given his big mission to go behind enemy lines in England and to spy on the British. He was given the maximum training he could have, and he was flown in a German bomber from Schiphol Airport near Amsterdam towards England. He was hiding in the belly of the German bomber, and at around 8.30pm, Jacobs jumped out of the aircraft with his parachute. He jumped out the plane and parachuted down, and his landing did not go well, as when he hit the ground, he landed in a potato field in a farm named Dovedale House Farm. He was lying all night in the field with a broken ankle, and the next morning he tried to work out what to do. Jacobs would be suffering, and he decided to try and attract attention by firing his Mauser pistol in the air, and he was then found by two farm workers who were en route for their day's work. But Jacobs was then taken by the Ramsey Home Guard, who informed the local police they had captured a spy. When the police arrived, they found different items on his possession, including a German wireless transmitter, which he had tried to bury in the soil. Jacobs was then taken to the police station, and his code disc was found, before he was then sent to hospital and was treated for his broken ankle. He was then imprisoned inside of Latchmere House, where MI5 interrogated him. He gave over different statements and information to his officers, and British newspapers told of his story and capture, but because of this, he was not deemed a successful case to be turned over as a double agent, as he was too well known. At the time, the Treachery Act stated the punishment for enemy spies who were said to have been tried by a civilian court by judge and jury, and their punishment could be death by hanging, unless they were soldiers, which meant they could be executed by a firing squad. Joseph Jacobs was said to have been a German citizen, and he was tried by court-martial. The court-martial took place on the 4th and 5th of August 1941, and he was tried in the Duke of York's headquarters in Chelsea. It was established that he was an enemy alien, and was also an enemy soldier. Most World War II spies would be tried in civil courts, and then be hung in England, but Joseph Jacobs would be executed by a firing squad. During his case, the prosecution and defence argued, but it only took 10 minutes of deliberation on the 5th of August to state Jacobs was an enemy spy, and for this he was sentenced to death, and was then sent to Wandsworth Prison to await his death sentence. He tried to appeal to the king, but this was denied, and the death sentence was then confirmed. However, Joseph Jacobs' execution would be incredibly historic, as it was the final one that took place inside of the Tower of London. 
The Tower of London was the infamous site of execution on the banks of the River Thames, in which two of Henry VIII's wives lost their heads, with Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard being executed in the 16th century by sword and axe. But it was also a place where there was a huge amount of torture carried out within the walls of the tower. For example, devices such as a rack were used upon many people who were stretched limb from limb. Also, other devices such as a scavenger's daughter were used. And there was also an oubliette there, a tiny dungeon called Little Ease, where prisoners such as Guy Fawkes were held inside, and this inflicted a huge amount of pain and suffering. In the early morning of Friday the 15th of August 1941, Joseph Jacobs was taken from Wandsworth Prison under a military escort, and he was then taken inside the walls of the Tower of London. When he arrived at the Tower, a doctor offered him some medication to calm him, and Jacobs took this offer. Inside of the Tower, he was sent to the miniature firing range, which was found inside of the inner and outer walls of the Tower. It was the same place where many enemy spies were executed during the First World War. As Jacobs got to the firing range, he was confronted by the executioners and the very firing squad that was gathered from members of the Scots Guard. They were armed with Lee Enfield rifles and Joseph Jacobs was then led into the firing range and he was sat down on a brown Windsor style chair. He was then tied to this chair and was blindfolded and as he was sat on this, a soldier pinned a circular target over his chest for the firing squad to aim at and they then placed a black hood over his head. Lieutenant Colonel C.R. Gerard was the man in charge of proceedings and he then gave the order for the firing squad to take aim and Jacobs' final words were, shoot straight Tommies. With this, the eight-man firing squad with their guns pointing at the German spy were ready and three of the guns they had been given were blank. Five of these had live rounds and ammunition to shoot into the spy rather than the traditional one round as they wanted to make sure that Jacobs died quickly. At 7.12am, the firing squad shot with their weapons and instantly the spy was killed. A post-mortem of Jacobs showed that he died from the wounds sustained from one of the bullets going straight through his heart and the other four bullets were scattered around the marked area on his chest showing that no one missed. Joseph Jacobs was then buried in an unmarked grave inside of a Catholic cemetery nearby. Joseph Jacobs has gone down in history as the last person to be executed inside the walls of the Tower of London. He joins Queens of England and members of the Tudor nobility and Stuart nobility who met their demise inside of the Tower of London. As history has changed, the method of execution may have changed from axe to gunshot, but Jacobs today still holds this record of being the last person condemned who was killed at the Tower. But who knows what the future may hold if future conflicts ever break out, then Jacobs's title as the last person executed at the tower may change. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.